Kevin's uh, 17th career NASCAR Sprint Cup Series win. Uh, he's he's won the All-Star race here before, but he had not won a points race at Charlotte uh, prior to today's uh, victory. It's his third win in 2011 that tops the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Kevin, people say you're one of the best, if not the best, closers in the business. And uh, certainly uh, took advantage uh, when opportunity knocked here tonight. Congratulations. Well, I just got to thank uh, everybody on our Budweiser Chevrolet team for, um, you know, they, they do this a lot. They give us chances to win races and, and put ourselves in position. And, and I've been on the other side of this fence a lot, um, you know, with the field mileage stuff and, and the strategy. And uh, it just seems like this year you have to be more aggressive, uh, taking chances. And, and I think, um, you know, winning those couple races early in the year, we had a 30 lap window there with a couple pit stops to go that we were hoping we could make to just get to the last pit stop. And I think they wanted to pit, it sounded like to me. And I was like, we didn't come here to run 15. So we stayed out on the racetrack, three or four laps from the end of our, of our fuel window, everything worked out. And when that last green flag dropped, I ran about two laps and I saw those guys up there racing. I knew I was a lap and a half short. So I just shut my car down. Uh, I didn't have any pressure from behind me. And we ran probably uh, 10 or 15 laps, probably a second off the pace, and, and uh, I got some good savings uh, under the caution, and, and we thought we were, we were plenty good there, so it all worked out. Richard, uh, talk about uh, winning the uh, Coca-Cola 600 for RCR <laughs> on Memorial Day weekend with a special pace team <laughs> with the uh, 29 Budweiser Chevrolet. That'd be a big thrill for you. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's really great, uh, especially on uh, Memorial weekend, the Everybody understand what Memorial Weekend is all about. It's not celebrating racing and a lot of other things, but it's celebrating our, our fallen troops and our veterans that gave us the opportunity to do what we were able to do tonight. And uh, I, I couldn't be prouder of Kevin and Gil and the whole Budweiser and Jimmy John's team. It's, uh, uh, it was one of those deals that they started saving and I was listening to them on the radio all the way through it and just run hard enough to stay in front of uh, at the time, it was a 31, and uh, Kevin is as good as anybody knowing how to save fuel, and I felt we were going to be right there at the end, and uh, if anybody could make it, I felt we could. We'll take questions now for Kevin or Richard. If you have one, raise your hand. We'll start right here with Jenna, and then work our way around. Go ahead. Jenna Fire AP, two, two things, Kevin. Number one, you were miserable for most of the race. Well, Charlotte. <laughs> okay, I, I mean, what, Even though we won, I'm still miserable. <laughs> in about 30 minutes, I will be happy when we drive out of that tunnel, and the month of May is over. You've got to be pretty delightful for Delana. Like, you were pretty miserable. What was going on with your car? And, and what, what Was it just Charlotte, or was that it? And a, a lot of times, when guys win this way, you, you've led nine laps and three wins this year. You start to say, maybe this is their year. Maybe things are just lining up. Are you starting to think that at all? Well, look. Uh, when we pull into Charlotte, I apologize before I even get to the racetrack because there's nothing. I mean, there's this is a great racetrack. It's a great facility, and I know everybody loves coming here because it's close to home. For me, it's been a struggle since day one of my career. And um, well, I shouldn't say that. We finished second the first time I came here, and that was about it. And so for for me, it's just been that that thing in my mind, that one racetrack that just frustrates the hell out of me that I can't figure out. And I just uh, when we started the green. And they threw the green flag tonight. Um, you know, we fought the same thing for, for last week and this week. And I said, uh, I said, well, we haven't fixed it in two weeks. And Gil said, well, we got four more hours, and we're going to fix you right up. So usually, when he says something like that, it always comes back to haunt me. And um, that, it, honestly, it's 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 great to be a part of this team because everybody everybody knows who, who I am. They don't they don't get down on me, and nobody gets really down on each other. Um, you know, and, and if, if if we wouldn't have won the race, everybody would have went home and we would have said we, we would do this different or that different. And we'd all smiled about it by the time we got done um, at 8 o'clock on Monday morning after our competition meeting. So it's just the, the chemistry and the, the way that everybody is on this race team, money can't buy that. And when you have a race team like that, I've never had that until I, you feel everything gel and, and you feel everything come together and you race for a championship and you do all the things that you do. It's not about having the fastest car all the time. Sometimes it's just about believing in everybody around you and putting yourself in a position to win. And these guys put us in a position to win a lot. And we've been able to do that over the past couple of years. And 
if we aren't winning, we can take a, you know, the, the, the championship teams are, are when you can take a 15-place car and you can finish fifth with it. And that's what we did today. Are you feeling like shaping up to be your year, a special year? I think it's been a fun year so far. Anyway, we're going to have fun. This stuff is way too hard. Uh, if it all works out in the end, great. Uh, we're going to fight all the way to the end to, to make it, you know, put ourselves in a position to do everything you can. But you never know. I mean, it's so early. Um, but uh, we're, hopefully we're right in the middle of it. Crew Chief uh, Gail Martin has joined us now. Gail, talk about uh, your thought process there towards the end of that race, having to save fuel, et cetera. Kevin certainly is a master doing that. Well, yes, he does a great job on that. And, and we knew with, uh, with right at 100 laps to go, we had our mindset that we were needing to get to lap 348 to uh, be able to make it in one last stop. And when that caution came out on 340 or whatever it was, we knew it was going to be extremely close right then. And we started, uh, Jeremy and Matt, two engineers, they started crunching numbers as hard as they could go. And we pretty well, any way we could crunch them, we were a lap and a half short. And so basically, Kevin that, and he did a great job saving fuel, you know, from the drop of the from the, the whole last run because uh, there was no way that we were going to make that and uh, he made those he made that up didn't lose any real time on the racetrack so uh, he was able to save fuel and maintain speed at the same time and that's uh, that's two things it's hard to do okay we'll open it up again for questions we'll go with joe and then over here to jim go ahead joe menzer nascar.com uh richard i just want to get your reaction to seeing your three cars lined up there uh, helping each other out pushing each other uh, at the end, that was kind of unique, and you know, for the other two guys, uh, how nerve-wracking is that at the end? It's got to be pretty, pretty nerve-wracking. Well, this whole race was this was probably as uh, competitive of a 600 that I've witnessed uh, all night long. The, the field kept changing at the front and changing, and but to see our our cars uh, working together, that's what a uh, owner loves to see or wants to see, and. Uh, it was all legal. You can do what we were doing there. Uh, you just can't push somebody across uh, the checker flag to win it on the last lap. I think that's the rule. But uh, it was pretty neat to, to see everybody work together. And uh, I'm sure uh, uh, they're happy to see Kevin win. That is the rule. You can't do it on the points the white flag has been displayed. That's correct. What was the second half of the question? No, no they're right now. Field lines racing is. There's no gas gauge in the car, and there's really no rhyme or reason. Uh, I have a pretty good idea. When they when they say a lap and a half, I feel like I got half of that uh, under caution after the pit stop. And you know the way that the way that we didn't we didn't take advantage of the new tires. I ran a couple laps. I didn't feel like I you know I needed to be racing that hard. I feel like the, the first 10 or 15 laps were probably a second slow of probably what we could have ran. And I felt like we we had we had saved a good portion of the next 30 or 35 laps and uh, he actually felt comfortable enough with it you know with the, with the pace that we had run um, you know to tell me to go ahead and go so I felt when he was that comfortable with it and then Richard overruled him and said slow down oh, so uh, when the caution came out the slowdown probably worked out pretty good so it was a good balance uh, between between everybody and uh, we didn't need another caution that's for sure We'll go to Jim and then we'll go to press box. Go ahead, Jim, and then we'll get some in the back. Go ahead. Jim on a trial observer. Question for Kevin and then for Gil. Uh, Kevin, um, earlier in the race, you uh, were a little upset about one of the debris cautions. And I just wondered at the end of the race, uh, your teammate, Jeff Burton, got caught up in a wreck uh, on the next to last lap. They didn't throw a caution. Is that a different scenario uh, for you, or does that just kind of fuel the fire of your earlier complaint? Well, I, I think when you're when you're the when you're the recipient uh, of the caution and it's not falling your way, you're going to be mad. Um, you know, I don't know if there was caution, if there was debris out there or not. Um, you know, I was frustrated, but all the guys who who were the beneficiary of that weren't frustrated. So it's just it's just the nature of the beast. And, and um, you know, the one thing I have learned over the last two or three weeks, and, and, and it really kind of puts it all. The reality is. Um, there has to be there has to be a judge. There has to be somebody making those decisions, and there has to be, you know, somebody who's going to say, you know, there's debris on the track. I see it, and there it is. And if the if this car is illegal or that car is illegal, here's the penalty. Here's that. It took me after the whole Kyle Busch thing and, and, and the whole penalty. It took me a couple of weeks to get over that, and, and and I was really frustrated. And I had a good conversation with Mike, and and that that part made sense to me, and I and I understand. 
but still doesn't keep me from getting frustrated. And I still, you know, if I don't see the debris, I'm going to be mad on the radio because we just want to lap down. So, you know, there, there has to be somebody, there has to be somebody making the calls and I'm glad I don't have to make them. And for Gil, um, at the end of the race, how much did you pay attention to what problems other teams might have? And were you uh, hoping that Kevin would get an opportunity to race to, to the end without a caution? Did you think something might happen? Well, I really was because of the fact we watched for the last 40 laps, lap times that some of those guys were running. And knowing that, I felt like we got some of the best gas mileage all night long of anybody because there's a lot of times where we could have gone a lot further than we went. And those guys were talking like, like he would take that that, uh, that they were going to be three or four laps short. And they were setting a pace at 2970s and 2980s and everything. We were running 3080s. And I knew at that point they were they pretty much given up that they weren't going to be able to make it. They were hoping their caution was going to come out and they would get to pit and it would cycle right on down the road. But the pace that they set and they tried 25 laps later to start saving fuel, I knew they were dead in the water at that point because they uh, they extended themselves too far early. Let's go to the press box questions. Go ahead. Boxsports.com. Kevin, obviously you're not going to give away any wins, but. You've had to endure long losing streaks in the past. How do you feel for Dale Jr. Hey, being so close to having a long losing streak and then losing it right at the end? I feel like complete crap, to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, man, when I saw that thing slowing down, I'm like, I really want to win the race, but why Why does it happen? I mean, why couldn't it be on a day when we're running bad or, or have something go wrong? Because I, I think everybody sitting up here would, would say that, you know, we want the, we want the 88 to win, and, and they're so close to, to winning, and, and both times they had a chance to win. Uh, we're going to do what we have to do to, to win the races, and, and um, you know, today it all just worked out strategy-wise that, that we won the race, but um, I feel so stinking bad for him. Um, and I know I know how bad he wants it, but it's um, it'll happen. I mean, they keep running like that, it'll happen. Yeah, shares press box. Go ahead. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day. For, for Kevin and Gil, uh, Kevin, you talked about the chemistry this team has. Well, when did that begin? Was that during the chase last year? Was it during the offseason coming this season? And, and do you guys feed off of this this new closer label that you sort of garnered this year? You know, I think that I think the chemistry part of it, um, I really think the beginning of last year when everything was, everybody was so wound up in the contract stuff and, and, and Gil was kind of the ringleader of, you know, we're going to go out and we're going to race and we're going to concentrate on racing and we're going to do this and do that. And, and he just corralled everybody. And, and the next thing you know, everybody was on the same page and all that stuff was over with. And then, you know, the, the extra effort that he put into the beginning of the year to, to make sure everybody was on the same page. All of a sudden, when, when Richard and I, you know, made everything official and we put it all out there and, and tell, told everybody what we were going to do, and everybody was already on the same page. And, and then, it, then everybody was like, ah, oh, all right. You know, everybody's at, at peace with that, and, and but everybody was already getting along and, and understood who each other was, and these guys have been together for a long time. So I really think the beginning of last year was, was when, when that really fell into place. Go ahead, press box. Terry, we're clear for now, but I think uh, wasn't that question also directed to Gil? Gil, yeah, yes, question. Oh, yeah. Chemistry. Well, I mean, it really does, it does work like that way because I came to RCR in 2000, and uh, I had the opportunity to come into the, the Bush shop then, the Nationwide shop now, and when Kevin was driving for the ACD Elko car, and uh, I got to work hand in hand with that group and with Kevin through that, that whole season, and then uh, I think 2002, uh, we won in Chicago, basically the same kind of race like this, but a good rich car. And so myself, I've had pretty good chemistry with, with Kevin the whole time, because I've watched his driving style and, and everything else, and no matter where he goes with his, uh, if he gets mad or whatever has happened across through the years. A ramble. Or, yeah, it, uh, I've Ramble. learned to deal with it. It doesn't bother me. And I think all these guys have learned the same thing, that, uh, that we can sit up in the lounge and we can throw punches and take them pretty easily with each other and nobody gets offended. And that's what it's all about. Because this sport is so much about feelings and everybody wearing their feelings on their shoulders. And then one of you will interview one of us and say, well, this one said that. And got mad on the radio and Kevin thought the car was terrible and what are you going to do? Well, this was one of those nights and we just worked our way through it. And and basically, uh, I mean, he has a right when we come here to Charlotte where we have it run bad. We basically have to give him a very good car because he obviously can get it done here. And that's the stuff that we're working on because uh, the chemistry end of it is where we need it. So, uh, I mean, I don't know what else you say about it. It's working pretty good right now. I like it. 
back downstairs, go back in the back. Kathy, uh, Genevieve, do you have questions? <laughs> Kim Robertson, Insider Racing News. Um, this is for a question for Richard. Um, with that last lap um, crash, or second to last lap crash, you had a car that was actually involved in it. There was no yellow flag thrown for it. Um, were you concerned that there should have been a caution thrown, or did you understand the reasoning that because of the fact that all the cars were off the track that it was, it was there to go for you? I didn't see. There wasn't any other cars in danger at the time when Jeff got, I think he got hit from behind. I was actually watching the front and didn't see really what happened. But I watched to see if he got going and I was hoping he'd get going because we didn't need a green-white checker. So uh, uh, NASCAR, just like Kevin said, somebody had to be the judge and they uh, let it go. And then I seen Jimmy blow up and I said, I said, I can't say what I said, but I said something. <laughs> and uh, anyway, it worked out for the right. matter of, uh, of us tonight. Yeah. 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 Y